Welcome to Reason with Equations and Inequalities. As you think about this lesson, keep in mind this question. How do you represent questions about linear functions symbolically? Our objectives today are to use symbols to represent questions about linear equations, and then to use tables, graphs, and algebra to solve symbolic answers to questions about linear relationships. Let's start by considering trends in the percentage of male and female medical doctors. So to plan for future educational programs and medical services, medical schools, hospitals, and clinics might wonder these four questions. So for example, in 2020, what percent of U.S. medical doctors will be female? When will the percent of female doctors reach 40%? When will the percent of male and female doctors be equal? And how long will the percent of male doctors remain above 70%? The trends in percent of male and female medical doctors can be modeled by these linear functions. Here's a graph of what these look like. Notice our first one, percentage of male doctors. Our starting point here is 98, which is about right here. And then our slope is negative 0.54. As you recall from previous lessons, that's our rate of change. So the percent of male doctors since the year 1960 has been steadily decreasing, whereas the percent of female doctors since 1960 has been steadily increasing. Y1 and Y2 represent that percentage of male and female doctors. So let's consider these questions. How can we use these linear functions to help us represent the solutions? So in other words, we want to represent them symbolically. Not necessarily solve this at this time, but just represent the situation symbolically. In the first one, in 2020, what percent of U.S. medical doctors will be female? Pause the video and see how you can use this linear function to help you to solve or represent this situation. Well, first, Let's consider the year, 2020. Well, remember that our table, if we look back, considered the year since 1960. Well, 2020 is 60 years since the year 1960. The difference between 2020 and 1960 is, in fact, 60 years. So what are we going to do with this? We want to know what percents which means we're trying to find y of U.S. medical doctors will be female. So because this is female, we're using y2. And in this situation, we're trying to find y2 when t is 60 years. So we can represent number one with this equation. This is a symbolic representation. Let's look at the second one. When will the percent of female doctors reach 40%? Well, again, we're looking at y2, and we want it to equal or reach 40%. So where do we put the 40? Do we put it in for time, or do we put it in for percent? We would put it in here for percent. And then we could write out our equation. You'll notice that on both of these, we could solve these to find the answers. But right now, we're just considering how to represent these symbolically. Let's look at the third one. When will the percent of male and female doctors be equal? Pause the video for a second and think about how you could represent that symbolically. Okay, so Y1 represents the percent of male and Y2 represents the percent of female. If we want them to be equal, we can take the equation for Y1, which is 98 minus 0.54t, and we can set that equal to the equation for Y2 which is 2 plus 0.54 t. So when will the percent of male and female doctors be equal? Well, we made these equal, and then we would just want to solve for t. Finally, the last one, how long will the percent of male doctors remain above 70%? That's a little more tricky, right? Because above 70% could be 71%, 72%, 80 90 100 there's a whole range. Anytime we're dealing with a range of solutions and not just a single solution, 
then we need to use inequalities. Well, we're talking about male doctors, so we have to use this equation. And we want to know how long will the percent of male doctors remain above 70%. So we know that Y1 has to be 70, and we know that the right side of our equation, we're going to use the male equation, which is 98 minus 0.54 T. But what do we put in between? Do we put an equal sign? We would only put an equal sign if, we, if the question said, when will we reach 70%, like in number two? But we want to know how long will the percent of male doctors remain above 70%. So all this represents the percent of male doctors, and we want it to be greater than 70%. So this is how we could represent that symbolically. Writing equations and inequalities to represent important questions is really only the first task in solving the problems. So our next step would then be to solve those equations or inequalities that we created to represent our questions. In other words, we want to find the values of the variables that satisfy these conditions. Let's look back at these. In this case, I'm going to be solving for y. In the second one, I would be solving for t. In the third one, I would be solving for t. And in the fourth one, I would solve the inequality for t as well. That's how I can do it algebraically. But I can also use tables in graphs, as we've done before, to help us estimate or find solutions. So let's try to use a table. Here I've done is created a table of time since the years 1960, starting with zero, all the way up through 90 years since 1960. And then I've got a column for y1, which is this top equation, and a column for y2. In order to fill out my table, I would simply just need to plug in t, the value for t, into each one. So for example, in the first one for y1, I would have 98 minus 0.54 times 0. What does this equal? Anything times 0 is 0, so 98 minus 0 is just going to give us 98. So for y1 right here, my answer is 98. What about y2? y2 is going to be the same way. I'm going to plug 0 in my equation, which is 2 plus 0.54 times 0. Well, 2 plus 0 is just 2. So my table right here for y2 would just be 2. Let's do one more. Let's try 10. So this would then be 98 minus 0.54 times 10. 0.54 times 10 is 5.4, and 98 minus 5.4 is going to give me 92.6. And that's what I would do for y2, and I would continue that all the way down until I had a table of values. Now, let's consider these symbolic representations below a through D here, and explain what each solution will tell us about the percentages of male and female doctors in the U.S. Let's look at A2. This is Y2 equals 2 plus 0.54 times 40. So where is that in my table? Well, 40 represents T, and that is right here at 40. So I want to know what y2 is, and y2 is 23.6. So what is that saying? That's saying 40 years after 1960, the percent of male doctors will be at 23.6. How about b? For b, we're looking at the equation 98 minus 0.54t, which is now we're looking at y1. So we want to look at where the value y2, or y1, I should say, is equal to 90. So don't get that confused with the t values. We don't know t on this one. Well, where does it equal 90? Hmm, for y1, if I scroll down here and look, I don't see any 90s. But I can make a rough estimate that it's in between here. 
So for y1, a value of 90 is going to be somewhere in here between 10 and 20. Well, what about my graph? If I look at my graph, here's y1. Where does it equal 90? It equals 90 right about here. And if I come down, I can see that that's close to 20. That's around 19. So I can estimate this at being around 19. Let's look at C. In this case, what is this saying? Well, this is saying when does y1, which is this equation, equal y2? That's really easily found by looking at my graph. So if I look at my graph, they only equal each other in one spot, and that's right here. Coming down, that's at about 90. So I know the answer here is around 90. But if I look at my table, at what point do the two values equal each other? And if I look right here at 90, they're very close. So this point of intersection is not quite 90, but very close. Finally, let's look at the last one. At what point does my equation for y1, which is my males, the percent of males, greater than 80? Well, here's 80 right here in my table. And if I come across right here, I can see that aligns with about 32 maybe. So to be greater than 80, I have to be above 32. I can also look in my table under y1. I want to be greater than 80. Well, here's the line. And somewhere between 40 and 20, I start to be greater than 80. You have seen how tables and graphs can help you to make reasonable estimates about different patterns or relationships. If we want to be more precise, however, we can actually solve our algebraic symbols that we created, such as in the previous page, here to find exact values. Let's try one. Let's look at this bottom one here. 98 minus 0.54t is greater than 80. Remember that we said it's somewhere between 20 and 40. And on our table here, it looks like it may be around 32, but let's go ahead and try to solve this. So we have 98 minus 0.54t is greater than 80. In order to solve this problem, we would first need to undo things in order to isolate our t. So we would need to subtract 98 from both sides. These would cancel and we would be left with a negative 0.54t on the left and a greater than negative 18 on the right. 80 minus 98 is a negative 18. Finally, we would need to divide by the coefficient, which was negative 0.54t. So we would need to divide both sides by negative 0.54. These cancel and we're left with t. Now remember, when we're solving problems that have inequalities, if we divide or multiply by a negative, as we're doing here, this sign needs to switch. So in other words, it now becomes less than, and let's rewrite that. Notice how here it's greater than, now it's less than. And then we can divide negative 18 by negative 0.54. I'm just going to divide 18 by 0.54 because I know that a negative divided by a negative is just going to give me a positive. So we were very close on our estimate. We said around 32 years, and it looks like any time that's less than 33.33 will answer this last problem here. And that concludes our instruction today on reasoning with equations and inequalities. After today, you should be able to use symbols to set up and represent questions about linear equations, as well as use tables and graphs and algebra to solve these symbolic answers.